Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten Hello land. Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is a quick tip video for Dark Souls 2. Uh, the tips here are going to be in regarding to the challenge rings. This is going to be the brother and sister projects of two videos I'm making. One to cover the, um, the Conqueror ring, the other to, f to cover the, the Exalted ring. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a little bit of a, an update for it. On Dark Souls 2, there exists two rings. Each of them are awarded post-credits for doing something or, or doing these particular runs in these particular games. And the first one we're going to be covering is the Conqueror Ring, which I think it's the illusory ring of the Conqueror, and you get this ring by beating the game without dying. What the ring does is it makes the left-hand weapon, which is ever in your left hand, completely invisible, which is obviously useful for a variety of things, but isn't as useful as perhaps this challenge would deem. But this is not about the usefulness or the efficacy of the rings, this is literally about some tips on how to get them, because a lot of people have been asking me, you know, Chris, have you done these challenge runs? Are you intending to do these challenge runs? Will we see these challenge runs? And uh, I'm going to stamp all that out now and give you my tips, because you will not be seeing them, because the runs themselves are, are pretty dire. They're not very fun at all, in, in any way whatsoever. I did not enjoy either run. And uh, that's just me. You might love them. It's all player preference. But uh, anybody who's been with this channel a long time knows that I really do not value developers who think no death stuff increases challenge in some way or gives it some kind of essence of difficulty. Because it doesn't. It's the same game. You're just shitting your pants for, you know, the entire duration of it. And I don't find that very fun, personally. But I'm going to try my best now to be as concise and as quick as I can to get these tips out to you. Because it's not really... You know, a lot of these are going to be self-evident, but there are a couple of things I found out that definitely make it easier. So, on the no-dying thing, the first thing you need to know is you can be cursed. If you are cursed by pots, by the lion's attacks, by, you know, the, the last boss, whatever that happens, if you get cursed, you are fine. It does not count as a death. It will just lower your life as it does as we know. If you're petrified, that is a death. That will be a failure and a void of this ring. If you die, obviously you'll void it as well. But curse is okay. Don't worry about curse. It's not really a thing. Second thing you're going to need to do is use a build you're comfortable with that covers all scenarios of something at range, something up close, something with power, something with heal, you know, something that enables you to play the way you're most comfortable and the way that you know the game the best. Obviously, you want to have a good understanding of where you're going to be going, how you're going to be getting there, and exactly what you're going to be doing when you get there. All that comes from playing the game, guys. Once you have that knowledge, it's all about execution. On my first attempt at this ring, it took me two. I did the Lost Sinner. I did Dear Freya, or Freyja, depending on how you say it. I like Freya, even though it's probably wrong. And then I went for the gutter, and I actually fell in the pit in Medulla, and I died from fall damage. And then I was taught a very important lesson because I actually diminished the challenge of this ring. I thought you could use Ring of Protections to essentially not get the death to count. Doesn't work, guys. Those rings will not save you. If you wear them and you die, it still counts as a death. And all you have to do is check your little totem monolith obelisk thing in Medulla to see if you have died or not. And if it says you've died, you will not get the ring, so you need to start again. But get comfortable with where you're going. As I said, I died in that pit on my first time through, and it put me off doing it ever again, essentially. So what I did instead of doing the gutter and doing the rotten is I farmed the iron keep. I uh, used a bonfire ascetic so I could kill the, the iron king again, get some more souls, and then I just farmed the enemies, and I got to the one million breakpoint of opening the Shrine of Winter. Once I did that, I was able to continue onwards. From that point on, the game is pretty simple, as long as you know exactly what you're doing. You're obviously going to need some range for the Shrine of Amana, because if you don't have range, you're going to have a lot of trouble. That being said, the Shrine has been nerfed now so heavily that it's an absolute joke, so you're probably not going to have any difficulty there whatsoever. And it's just boss knowledge at that point. When it comes to the Throne Defenders and the Throne Watcher, you can summon directly outside that door. It makes that fight completely trivial if need be, and you can use the same enemies for Nashandra. The one real area that I was super fearing because I had a really bad experience of it on my first attempt, 
uh, my first attempt at the game, sorry, was the memory of Jay, the, the mandatory giant memory. Because the ballistas that fire the, the AoE, it can be a one-shot on even a strong character. And there's nothing much you can do, because you, you can in fact shoot the ballistas at the boats to try and hit them. And if you do hit them, I believe you'll stop them from firing those mortars. But there's no consistency on it and there's no skill involved. It's all luck of spray and I really didn't want to be lingering around that long. So what you need to do on that memory is, is you need to be super comfortable with it because that rolling head will one-shot you, those giants do massive damage, the, the, the mortar fire is insane, and the boss himself is very awkward because he's big, the camera's bad, the arena's kind of shitty, the ballistas are shitty, it's all kind of shitty. On my successful run, I was using Hexes, I was using Great Resonant Soul, uh, Resonant Soul together in conjunction, and I killed that guy really quickly, and I, I managed to do all of it without any trouble, and once I'd done that point, I knew I had the ring, because it would have taken, you know, just a silly mis mistake, which can happen at any time, and the thing you just need to bear in mind as I wrap up here, guys, because I don't want this to go too long, and I have a habit of speaking quite long, it isn't hard to do this, folks. The reward is nowhere near as juicy as it should have been, but the challenge is keeping your composure. Doing jumps you've done a thousand times without fucking them up, and it's so easy to do because of the nerves. And it's a choke fest. The entire game is a choke fest. Simple jumps become just terrifying. Even being near an edge, you suddenly realize how easy it would be to run off it. It's those kind of psychological mind games that you're going to have to put up with. As long as you can put up with those, you're going to have a smooth sailing time getting through the game. Everything after that is understanding, knowledge, and skill. And hopefully you have all of those, and you'll be able to come, ar come away sorry, with the illusory ring of the Conqueror. So, I hope those tips have helped. I know they're pretty much pointing out the obvious, but I wanted to make these more to, to tell people that you don't expect these videos because they're not coming because it's just not a fun challenge. Challenge runs will come, and they will be fun, and they'll be fun that you can replicate, so look forward to those. But thank you for watching, and you take care now.